Creating an SSH KPAR requires typing commands into a terminal window on your PC and follows a similar process on all operating systems. If you only require one key, you can accept the default name of ID RSA. However, if you log into other services with key-based authentication, such as other HPC clusters or GitHub, then you may want to name your key to make it easier to identify. In first example, we will create SSH KPAR on the default name ID on the slash RSA. You need to run SSH KGAN command with two options, dash T to specify key type and dash B to specify key length. K type RSA and length 4096 bit in our case. When prompted for name of key, simply hit enter to create it under default ID RSA name in default location. If you decide to change name of key, you can type it here, but note that you need to enter full path to key, or it will be created in current directory. You will be prompted for a passphrase. And then, to confirm your passphrase, we highly suggest you to protect your keys with a passphrase. Please choose passphrase you can recall, or you will need to create new key as key phrase cannot be restored. As you can see, two files was created in your .ssh directory after this step. After key pair is created, you can copy your public key to your home directory to make it visible to browser and you can upload it using online form or sent by email. If you already have a key called ID on the slash RSA or want to give your key a more descriptive name, you can either use steps from previous example, but enter key name other than ID on the slash RSA with full path to key location, either use option dash f to specify k name and location. In this example, we will create new k par under id rsa apocrita name. As you can see, new k pair created in .ssh directory. Now you can copy public key to your home directory to make it visible to browser. If you need to set or change your private key passphrase, you need to use dash "-p", option. You will be asked for old passphrase first, and then you need to enter new one, and confirm. Please note, if you forgot your passphrase, K cannot be restored. To connect with your private SSH key using command line, you need to add option dash "-i", this path to your private SSH key. As you can see, we are using private key with name ID RSA Apocrita located in SSH directory. On first connect, you will be asked to save signature in known host file. Type yes here and hit enter. Then type in your Apocrita password, and if it will be correct, you will be connected to Apocrita. Here you can see that file known hosts is created. To connect to Apocrita using SSH agent, we need to check first if it is running and if any keys are added to agent. Type ssh add l command. If you see error here, that means that ssh agent is not running. To run ssh agent, type following command, and in output you will see process ID under which ssh agent is running. It means that it was started successfully. Now, if you type ssh add l command, you will see that no any identity added yet. Adding key to agent is very simple. Just type ssh add and path to your private ssh key. Passphrase for this key will be asked and after you enter correct passphrase, k 
key will be added to agent. Now, if you type ssh add l command, we will see fingerprint of added key. If you wish to remove all keys for some reason from ssh agent, just type ssh add capital D and hit enter. Another useful method to connect is using config file. In this example, we will create config file. Default location of config file is ssh directory. Create new file called config in your .ssh directory using your favorite text editor. I will use Vim in this example. Enter host keyword and name for host. You will be able to use it as a shortcut for connection. Then type hostname with login address. User with your username. Identity file. Path to your private SSH file. And if required, Forward x11. Now save file. Now, if you type command ssh apocrita, connection with predefined parameters will be initiated. If you see following error, just ignore it. It is happening because of x11 forwarding option. This file is created on first connection automatically.